Hello there everyone, I'm Crazy Caleb, and today we are taking a look at vectors. So what we need to do is we need to figure out A, how many vectors are on the module, and what each of their uh, magnitude and components are, and what their colors are simply. In this case, we are looking at two vectors. The first one is red, and the second is purple. You can tell the uh, numbers between them by A, the, um, the screen that's cycling uh, through each of the vectors, and B, if they happen to be the same color of vectors, um, the way how you can do it, the way how you can tell multiple vectors apart from one another, is vector 1 will always be the shortest. You can tell by this 3D um, graph right here. So red and purple in that order. So our X components for each one is going to be a 91 and a 36. Our Y components are going to be a 98 and a 6. And our Z components are going to be a 95 and a 37. These will come in later. So we're going to go down to the spot that's, that talks about multiple vectors and not just one. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do a couple calculations and then we're going to do a final calculation, and that will determine how long to hold the button for. Let's take a look at this unicorn rule, though. However, if the bomb has two batteries, more than two port plates, an SMD indicator, and one of the vector's colors is blue, hold the button for zero seconds to solve. We have no blue vectors, so this is already a no. So going back to our rules here, let's take a look. What we need to do first off is actually figure out a what the values are of each x and y component, x, y, z component, because they will only stay positives, but they they don't necessarily specify it. What do we have to do to specify if they are positive or negative? We have to actually look at the graph here, and I forgot to note down our magnitudes as well. So a 164 and a 52. So let's take a look. So we have our normal x and y axis like it would be on a linear graph, for those of you who are very familiar with that. However, the z, the, the z component comes in as sort of a front and a back rule. When you're looking at the front of the module, the z is coming towards you and the negative z is coming back, is going back towards the, uh, towards the module. So let's take a look at where the actual vector is pointing to and where and what direction it's heading in. So in this case, we can already tell it's going to the right, which is a positive x. It's going up, which is a positive y, and it's going for it's going it's coming towards us, which is a positive Zulu. However, let's take a look at our purple LED. So all of these x, y, and z values for our first one remain positive, but let's take a look here. This is heading towards the negative x-axis. So our x-axis becomes x component for this vector becomes a negative 36. Taking a look here, our, it's going up, so it's a positive y, stays the same, and it's going towards the front as well, so it is a positive z-axis. So that is the only value we've had to change, but of course there can be more. So let's take a look at what it says here. So we're going to use the color of the vectors to figure out a number, rounding to the nearest tenth, of course, that needed to be calculated for later use on the final calculations. It says here, keep in mind when performing calculations with vector components that they can be positive or negative, like I just mentioned. And that's where we reference the 3D graph. So, and it says here, it's also important to note, a vector's magnitude is always positive. So that's the way how you know um, you're doing something right, because it is always positive. So now we're going to take a look at a couple rules here. If more primary colors, in this case red, yellow, and blue, appear on the vectors than secondary colors, green, purple, and orange, there will only be those six colors, we would add the magnitudes together and multiply the sum by the sum of the serial number's digits to get the necessary number. However, that is not the case, because there is one red and one purple. There are an equal amount of primary and secondary colors. So we're going to go down to that rule and take this rule. Otherwise, if the number of primary colors on the vectors equal the number of secondary colors, which they do, we're going to square the last digit of the serial number and add the x component of the secondary colored vector to it for the necessary number. 
Let's take a look here. Last digit of the serial number is a zero. It happens to say the same. So we're going to take the <clears throat> x component of the secondary colored vector and get our necessary number. The secondary component, uh, the secondary color uh, x value is going to be a negative 36. And that's going to be our necessary number. So in this case, a negative 36. However, before we do this, for multiple vectors, we have to do one additional rule. Make sure to add the sum of the x components and y components onto the necessary number, and then subtract the sum of the z components before moving on to the final calculation. So what we're going to do is add the x's and y's together, but subtract the z components from the necessary number. And we're going to include this same value again, negative 36. So let's add up. We're going to add, so it's going to be 91 minus 36, a plus 98, and we're going to add 6. We're going to subtract, we're going to add that to 136, or subtract 36 in this case. And now we're going to subtract our z components in this case. We're going to subtract 95, and we're going to subtract a 37, leaving us with a negative 9, and that's what we're going to go into uh, the final calculation with. So before we even do anything, what we need to do is figure out our colors, because there's a little ring, if you haven't happened to notice yet, the little ring will start to flash colors. So in this case, we have a white, a blue, and a green. Those will come in later use in just a second. The nice thing is that the order does not matter in which you receive them, however there is indeed still a little break. That's how you can figure out if you have duplicate colors or not. Um, and just make sure that you have all the correct um, colors. There will always be three colors. Firstly, if only one vector was present, nope, but we would add together the number gotten from the missing data value and the number gotten from the vector's color. Hopefully I can get an example with one vector, we'll see. Otherwise, we're going to add together the number of the, the necessary number calculated from the multiple vectors, which we did, which we have as a negative nine, and we're going to add the number of arrow modules by x-ish on the bottom. So, for those of you who aren't familiar with these arrow modules, you'll understand, and I believe I have done a tutorial on them. Yep, it's all of these different arrow variants, except double arrows because that's by speech and evil. That's a different person. However, it does not include rainbow arrows, because this was made by Kaito Sinclair. So, any, any arrow variant, blue arrows, green arrows, orange arrows, purple arrows, red arrows, and yellow arrows, those will all be different. Those will all be relevant to this information. But, since we don't have any, because I'm only dealing with one module, it, we're not going to add anything. This sum will be called S. S, in this case, is negative 9, because we didn't add anything. So now what we're going to do is, for each color that we got from the ring, we're going to perform that specific calculation. And the reason why I said the order didn't matter is because each of them is an add and subtract. So, order really doesn't matter as long as you perform it. So we're going to start with negative 9, and let's perform uh, the white value. So we're going to subtract 27. In this case, giving us a negative 36. Let's do blue now. We're going to add the number of port plates and in indicators on the bomb to S. I can... hold on. That was weird. So, so number of port plates and indicators. One, two, three, and that's it. So we're going to add three. And finally, we're going to perform green. Subtract the digital root of the number of modules, including Yeezys, on the bomb from Sierra, or S in this case. So we're going to subtract 1, because we only have one module. And that gives us a final value of negative 34. So taking a look, so now we're going to take our newly modified S right here, cut off any decimal points after the whole number, and take its absolute value. So essentially we're going to get rid of any decimal points, no rounding, and we're going to get rid of any negative signs. So now we're going to modulo it by 15 and add 1. 
so in this case, we can subtract 15 until it's below 15, giving us a 4. And we're going to add 1, giving us a 5. And that is going to be how long we're going to hold the button for. So let's hold it for 5 seconds. And the nice thing is, is that it does have a little counter itself. So you do not need to keep track of the timer on the bomb because it, it refers to real seconds. So let's hold it. 1, 2, 3, 4, and a 5. And just like that, a solve module and the 3D graph goes away. Let's take a look at another one, and pray to God that I do indeed get one vector. No, we are taking a look at three vectors this time. So we're going to do the same the same thing, essentially, in the same section. And let's actually do that. So in this case, we are looking at th uh, three vectors. So it's also important to note here that we actually have two oranges. How can we tell the difference between the two oranges? Like it says up here, vector 1 will always be the shortest and vector 3 will always be the longest. So we can actually figure out by its length which one's vector 2 and which one's vector 3. So in this case, this back one right here is, a ve is vector 2 and this one right here is a vector 3. Because as you can see, it's going out farther. and its length is obviously longer. So let's note down the information it gives us. So vector one is yellow, and the vector and vectors two and three are orange. Our magnitudes that we're working with here is an 86, a 97, and a 96. Our X components for each one, three, four, 47, and a 23. Our Y values are going to be 57, 61, and a 92. And finally, our Zulu values are going to be 47, 59, and 15. So now, like we did before with the 3D graph, we're going to take a look um, and make sure that actually, and make sure if each positive if it is, is positive or negative. So in this case, let's start with the, um, the yellow here. It's going to the right, that's positive. It's going down, that's a negative Yankee value. However, it's going to the front, it's coming towards us, so that's a positive Zulu value, and that's all that changes. Next, let's look at that second um, orange vector back here, it's going to have everything negative because it's going to the left, it's going down, and it's going towards the back. So all of them are going to be negative in this case. So it's going to be a negative, you're going to be a negative, and you are as well going to be a negative. And for our third one, this one is going to the left, this one's going down. However, it's coming to the front, so only the X and Y will be negative values. And now let's perform our calculations. There are more primary colors than secondary. No, there are more secondary because we have two oranges and one yellow. So more secondary colors appear on the vectors. So we're going to multiply the magnitudes together and divide that by the first digit of the serial number. In this case, uh, an 8. If it happened to be 0, we would divide it by 1 instead. So, taking, so, so let's do that. So we're going to do 86 times 97 times 96 and divide this sucker by 8, giving us a final value, oh boy, of 100,104. And now we're going to do the same thing that we did before and making sure to add the X components and Y components onto the necessary number. So let's do that. So we're going to add 44 minus 47 minus 23, we're going to subtract 57, oh my god, subtract 61, and subtract a 92, and we're going to subtract 47, because we're subtracting the Zulu uh, components, however this is a negative value, so we're going to add 59, and we're going to subtract 15, in this case giving us 200, negative 239. 
So let's subtract that from 100,104. Uh, uh, 100, negative 239. Negative 239. Giving us a value of 99,865. And now we're going to go down to our final calculation. We had multiple vectors, so we're going to add zero, essentially, because we don't have any arrow variance on here. Taking a look, S is going to be that value. And now taking a look at what's flashing right now at the moment. I saw white before, I saw white before, and I'm seeing white now. And our first color is a blue. And just to confirm, blue, white, hmm. And a white. There are duplicate colors that can happen. The order doesn't matter because it's adding and subtracting. So let's do that. So two whites. We're going to subtract 27 twice. So minus 27 and minus 27. Giving us that. And blue, we're going to add the number of four plates and indicators. One, two. We're going to add two. Adding two gives us a final value of 99,000. 813. So now, uh, we didn't have any decimals, it's not a negative value. Let's modulo this by 15. So 99,813 mod, uh, lowercase that, mod uh, 15 is a 3. And then we're going to add 1, because it says so, giving us 4. And that's how long we're going to hold the button down for. One, two, three, and a four. And just like that, a solved module. We didn't have to um, do the unicorn rule because I knew for already that the none of the vectors were blue. So let's see if we can't get a single vector. So we do. Good. All right. This makes my life a lot simpler, and I'm glad I, I'm able to touch on both areas of uh, this module. So the difference between one vector and multiple vectors is there is a possibility of there being a component missing, which we have to calculate. A component or magnitude missing. If the magnitude was missing, we'd plug in this value. If a component was missing, we're going to plug in this value. So let's take a look. Our vector is green. We know that our magnitude is 100. We know that our x component is 29. We know that our y component is, we don't actually know it, so that's going to be up for debate. And our z component is a 43. Now we can always check whether our x's or y's are gonna be positive or negative. In this case, the only negative value is actually going to be y. So that's going to be a negative value because it's going down, but it's going to the right and it's heading towards us. So that's going to be our negative value. So what do we do if a component is missing? We're going to plug in all of known values into this equation and solve for the missing component, rounding to the nearest tenth, of course, where m is the magnitude, and a is the missing component, and b and c are the components uh, are the known components. So let's do that. Let's get rid of this up here. So we're going to square root. In parentheses, we're going to square root magnitude squared minus um, one component squared minus the other component squared that we now have. So, let's do that. So it's going to be 100 squared minus 29 squared and minus 43 squared. Plugging that in, gives us an 85.5 because we are rounding to the nearest tenth. 85.5. 85.5. And since we marked that this value would be negative because of the graph, that's just going to be a negative value. So now we're going to take another look here. Since we found our missing data value, and we're going to take a look at the vector color, in this case is green, and we're going to perform this for our final calculation. It is very important to note, though, that when we have this here, we're not going to perform the x, y, and z components like we did in the multiple vectors. 
that doesn't happen. So we don't have to worry about that step. We just have to worry about getting a number calculation from here. So now what we're going to do is the vector color is green. So we're going to get our number calculation by adding the number of RJ45 ports plus 204. So we have one and that's it. So in this case, our number calculation is going to equal 205. And that's what we have to do. So taking a look down here, we're going to go to our final calculation. First off, if only one vector was present, which in this case it was, as it is in cycling through any other displays, we're going to add together the number got from the missing data value and the number gotten from the vector's color. So we're going to so we're going to add 205. I can type 205. We're going to actually subtract 885.5. Uh, in this case, it'll give me a 119.5, and this will be our S value. 119.5. And now we're going to perform the calculations of the rings. Taking a look down at our unicorn, it is not blue, so it doesn't matter. So let's get our calculations here. <clears throat> it's going to be a white. Here comes the reset. A blue, and I believe I saw a green earlier. That I did. And the red value would be just, we would add 122 as it says. So taking a look here. So we're going to have 119.5. We are going to subtract 27. We are going to add the number of port plates and indicators on the bomb. We have a 1, 2, and that's it. Add 2. And green, subtract the digital root of modules, including needs. In this case, 1. Subtract 1. And this is going to be our final value of a 93.5. And let's take a look at what we should finally do. Take the newly modified S, cut off any decimal points. We are not rounding here. So that's gone. So that becomes a 93. It's a positive integer. We're going to modulo it by 15. 93 mod 15 is going to give us a 3. 3 plus 1 is a 4, and that's how long we're going to hold the button down for. 1, 2, 3, and a 4. And just like that is a module solved. As always, thank you guys for watching. Stay crazy, stay cool, and I'll see you guys later. Bye bye